If the stories are to be believed, the Otways is an area of great mystery and intrigue. Witches covens, moonshine stills, the odd crop of dubious distinction, but a fabulous place to take a drive through some of Australia's finest scenery and rainforest. Tall trees, prehistoric plant life, ferns, billabongs, waterfalls, really wild beaches. And as you'd expect from such a dramatic environment, some of the most wild, zany, and unique wildlife as well. This lush region, known as the Otway's Coast and Hinterland, stretches from the seaside town of Torquay up to Princeton and inland toward Colac. The Otway Fly treetop walk around 30 metres above the forest floor will provide you with a magnificent bird's eye view of this ancient rainforest. The fly works on three amazing levels. Firstly, there's the structure. Lord knows how they managed to put all this together. It's a real engineering feat. Secondly, the structure removes you from any impact on the forest floor. And thirdly, it puts you in a position, the most amazing position, from which to view the rainforest. Sprawled across almost 100 hectares of private land, it's one of only five canopy walks in the country and the only one in Victoria. Why is it that any superstructure, any engineering feat anywhere in the world always talks about how many elephants that structure can hold? This one, for instance, this cantilever, is designed to support 14 elephants. The question is, how do they get them up here? A little further south toward Apollo Bay is another remarkable Otways experience, Wildlife Wonders, a chance to observe the area's natural beauty and wildlife in a predator-free setting. I love this spot you've got here. It's like a perfectly contained slice of the Otways, isn't it? I suppose that's the idea. I really love the approach, this gentle meander through the bush. Yeah, that's right. So we've designed it specifically to be just a gentle slope and that way people of all ages can come and enjoy it. Joined by a qualified conservation guide, visitors can get really close up to some of the country's most iconic animals. If you see one, are you likely to see more? Oh, very likely, yes. Uh, all these trees, uh, these eucalypt trees, are perfect habitat for our koalas, so... Yeah, and, um, and, and, and this aspect too, you're looking across at it. Oh rather yeah, than up right at, at eye level, right yeah. there, how lucky are we? Yeah. Really quite active at the moment. That's it. Is that a male or a female? Uh, so that one there is a female. She's a little bit smaller. But she has a lovely white chest. Yeah. From here, we're headed north to the enchanting Lake Elizabeth in search of one of the country's most elusive creatures. This is the perfect environment for what we're after today. It's the kind of place where you expect to hear a distant banjo or hear the bubble of a billy boiling on the bank. This is platypus territory. 20 years ago, Bruce and I set out for a dawn expedition, the hunt for a platypus. We never found one. In fact, I think I referred to it as being platypusless. But today, I'm feeling optimistic. I'm full of platypossibility. <laughs> This natural lake was formed after a flood in the 1950s caused a mudslide to dam the river. Uh, if you look just straight in front, just slightly to the right, near the ri um, just in front of that really tall tree, there's a platypus, that little silvery thing. Oh, yeah. It's just moving around. You might see it now a bit more. Yeah. And usually they're just there for a short time. It's just gone back under the water yeah. now, so they just uh, appear and then they'll move around maybe for half a minute and then disappear under the water, find some food and pop back up again. Bruce has a near perfect success rate spotting these very unique creatures. So there's a platypus at 12 o'clock, up where you? the ducks are. Yep. It's been up there the last few days, so... Just, just went back under, yeah. 